Welcome to Ucanic. Today here on Ucanic, we have a 2015 Mercedes GL450. On this GL, we have the V6 motor with the twin turbo design. And so we have our, we have an engine code on. And so we are going to read what that code is and then be able to find the sensor and start with by replacing the sensor. And of course, that can be only the one issue. Uh, or it can be another issue, but we'll start with the sensors and then if there's other issues, of course, that's a, a deeper work you would need to do on your engine. So we have the uh, can 2 scanner hooked up and then we're going to go into, we've already picked the motor, or not the motor, we've already picked the vehicle, it's communicated and told us what the motor is. Now we're going to go into the control modules instead of the quick scan because we just want to check out the engine. Then we're going to hit the drive, the motor electronics, read the codes and what we come back with is a P007D12 and that is the charge air temperature sensor on bank one. So that is the um, sensor that we're looking for and so we will find that sensor and uh, go through the replacement process. So you would have a little cover over here, part of your intake cover that sits up and covers the engine. Um, so you would pop that off and then we're going to get down into here where this is the uh, charge cooler and then we have the throttle body intake system and then this intake tube that goes into the engine but we're looking for the sensor that is right down here so to get to access we have we we'll want to remove the electric connector pull that tab up and then be able to squeeze it and pull that out and then this sensor we need to spin it pretty close to a quarter turn, a little bit more to the back. It's got this little tab on it and there is a raised section that is that is holding it so it can't just spin through the vibrations of the engine. And so we need to be able to try to spin that backwards. So this is the, the sensor that we are looking for. Is this little sensor. We have the clamp here, sensor, and then there is this in uh, line here. So we need to spin that sensor So we have the sensor spun back over that raised portion. It spins and then it stops at that function, that um, that part. Now we just need to kind of use some pry because you can't really get your hands in there. And we're just gonna work it out. And then we can be able to pull the sensor to remove it out. So we've removed that sensor that we need to replace and it's just a, a very simple sensor so you can just get a new one to be able to replace it and once you have your new sensor and this is where those little tabs those little tabs are what locks it into place and that's why you need to spin it backwards to get it out so we're going to take it and there you got this tab here this indicator and so we're going to have that about the one o'clock position and that puts it up over that little raised bump down there and we're going to turn it until it locks in. We need to go back a little bit more. We're not. All right. So it has pressed down into the holder. And now we'll need to spin the sensor. in place it's on this side of the uh, the little raised part there now you can hook the electric connector up press that tab down and lock it into place and so that's how you would replace that sensor once you're done replacing the sensor you'll go back into your your scan tool and we're going to erase that and clear the codes and it's saying that everything has passed because we're going to replace the codes. Now that can be one possible thing is to replace that sensor and we have one possible thing is to replace that sensor. Um, there could be other things that are causing that sensor to re-wrong and so you would need to start looking into other details or issues if that 
if you replace the sensor and it didn't completely fix it. But thanks for watching Mechanic, where you can be the mechanic.